So it is fair to say that this film has a lot of problems. It is very simplistic, cartoonish, has a very loose and non-existent moral conviction, so many ridiculous outlandish moments, not historically accurate, caricaturish, and all the rest of it. People have also called it a guilty pleasure. I won't go so far, because I find that when one gets swept up into this absurd affair, they cannot deny that something, at least temporarily, very impressive has been achieved by De Palma, Morricone, and the cast. There are many moments which I find sillily memorable and highly invigorating in the moment. The newspaper being carried from the hotel lobby up until Al Capone, up into Al Capone's bedroom, that is a superb sequence. Morricone's score fluctuates between cornball seriousness in that orchestral jazz mode, take the opening credit sequence composition, and stellar use of 80s keys in conjunction with an old school string section philosophy, as in the piece which plays during the aforementioned newspaper delivery segment. Sean Connery's Malone is a highly watchable character. Connery was arguably more watchable as an older actor than during his Bond years, and not when he played Bond as an older man, just to clarify. I like the Connery of the offence, the man who would be king, time bandits, outland, highlander, and or in the name of the rose. Then the Untouchables, it gets a bit silly for me. Last Crusade was always a bit too over the top and comedic for me. I know a lot of people love that one, I'm not enamoured necessarily. I'll compliment the rapidly shifting nature of the plot. Almost every scene brings a new development in the narrative. I would imagine that Mamet, considering the kind of material he is known for, now thinks more in terms of dialogue than genre tropes, and so is constantly progressing his plots via dialogue, even the action sequences infer distinct character psychologies and alter the status quo of the synopsis. And I have to commend the magnificence of the Odessa Step sequence homage, one of the Palmer's finest. It takes a really immature soul to claim that this is a rip-off rather than a tribute. Firstly, a rip-off implies taking credit for it opportunistically. The average film audience doesn't want to be interested in silent Soviet cinema, no matter how influential or artistically expert, and those that would recognise the homage are meant to, in order to de- Bring, in order to bring the history of narrative filmmaking full circle, that scene is highly contemporary, modern, cutting edge to 1987, and it revealed how much depth the medium still owed to pioneers of the 1920s, even. Besides, De Palma completely reappropriates Eisenstein's technique for a distinct context, isn't swapping an entirely contained and iconic moment in cinema's fundamental attributes, yet still remaining entirely faithful to it, not extraordinarily impressive. I guess we have to weigh up our appreciation for technical flexing versus socio-political cultural contributions. Artists need to appease the cultural critics rather than the cultural critics trying to make sense of the artists. I'm more attuned to the latter as someone who haphazardly attempts to be both. Pandemonium is on the way, I promise. Damn you, conversion rate, you are utterly insufferable. I'll accept all of the criticisms of The Untouchables, they are quite warranted. I even had a spell where I considered this movie terrible after wholly liking it as a mid-adolescent. Now, well, I can get behind it, but it is slop in many respects. Hey, consider Untouchables as a 70s film. What is different, then? On the one hand, we observe a refined, expansive technical finesse where filmmaking and production values itself are concerned. On the other hand, we have lost a certain earthiness, vague vanguard seriousness, strictly critic slash film student pathology, and Well, a desire for strict equality control, a belief that more is not necessarily better, but excess is excess, and that films are being viewed by people who had to leave the cinema and go back out into the real world, into a city that was popping with the problems of the troubled, infamous Zeitgeist fan. And especially considering De Palma is one of the most definitive of that generation's sires, we ought to consider The Untouchables an informative case study regarding 70s Hollywood and 80s Hollywood, especially, especially where crime films are concerned. We could say the same thing about Scarface, we'll get to that eventually, but The Untouchables is even more pronounced. Glossy, inorganically stylized, divorced from docu-fluidity, cinematic to the point of comic book pulpiness, pre Beatty's Dick Tracy, and striving to be enjoyed by as mainstream an audience as, as you can draw, and whilst being a prohibition period piece of that, no hit single to accompany the film, just overbearing action set pieces, intimidating music score, domineering photographic ethos, and for better or worse, deliberately animated acting performances. I don't know if I'll ever watch it again, I'll be completely honest.